All right, so uh, I'm pretty excited to walk you through my FX6 setup. Before we get started, I do wanna just kinda go over, um, you know, it, my rig, just like a lot of people, is probably yours as well, you know, it's gonna be changing all the time, so, uh, you know, take things with a grain of salt. I feel like whatever I have going on now <laughs> will probably be completely different a year from now. Hopefully this will help you um, basically, you know, in, in the way you, maybe you build your rig, uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's also, this is not, I'm not trying to tell you the way you should or that you have to. This is just what works for me. And primarily, you know, the work that I do um, is, is commercial-based and, and documentary. Um, so, so this setup is geared more towards that type of work. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, so I start with um, an external monitor. So and the reason there is, you know, the monitors that come on most cameras are just quite small, um, but they're, they're also just, I've, I've not found one that's really that great. Um, the FX6 monitor, it gets the job done, but again, you know, it's nothing that I like to constantly shoot on. Um, you see I'm wearing glasses now, I don't have to wear glasses all the time. Um, I have to when I'm, you know, using uh, the camera and I'm just like up close to things, so I have an astigmatism or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so ultimately, you know, bigger monitor. I don't like anything too big, um, but I feel like the five inches is like a big, big enough. It's a good like middle range as far as like an on camera monitor. Um, but yeah, the the monitor I use is the the small HD 503 Ultra Bright, um, and it's ultra bright. <laughs> uh, I think it's oh man, I think it's like two thousand something nits or whatnot. Um, super bright. You, pretty much never need to use like a, um, a hood on it, which is also really nice for me. I try to keep things as minimal as I can in terms of, you know, my camera setup. So that's really nice. Uh, it's also machined out of an entire, like the same piece of aluminum. Um, so it's because I've done it like that, it's, it's really, really sturdy. So it, it kind of eliminates the need for me to have to put it in a cage or anything to actually protect it. This monitor, it, can receive uh, HDMI and SDI. I go with the SDI um, option just because it's a lot more robust. Um, these connections, very sturdy. And this is a pro tip actually, you know, I use these little uh, right angle connectors. Here we are. Yeah, so those right angle connectors are are great. Um, yeah, put this here. And yeah, really the, the biggest difference between SDI, from what I, I understand, um, is it is just like a better connection, it's a stronger uh, connection. Um, and you'll see here, like I actually wrap my cables around this. Um, the back of the, the handle. Um, again, not everybody's gonna say that that's like the best way to do it. If I had to change this in any way, shape or form like really quick, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be ideal. But you know, normally I know when I put this on, it's, it's gonna be on there for the remainder of the shoot. So um, I feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> it, it just helps me keep the cables out of my way a lot more. Um, so, yeah, oh, and I forgot to mention, I have this top plate. This is a wooden camera top plate, um, and what it does is it just, it just allows you to um, mount a bunch of different, just give you a bunch of different mounting points on top of the camera. Um, I primarily use it to screw in these uh, little adapters from uh, Sprig, and what those do is they're just these little, like, adapters that allow you to um, do use as, like, cable management. Um, yeah, you know, but ultimately the cheese plate on top, the top plate, it, uh, having all those different mounting points is just really nice because, you know, there's a lot of scenarios where, yes, yeah, say, there's a lot of different scenarios that, you know, you, that this could come into good use, but one that I've experienced is like, say there's an audio engineer on site that, uh, they want to put, uh, some sort of lavalier pack or some sort of time code device or anything like, anything like that, like, 
uh, that they just want to mount and they may not like the mounting points that you've given them. So I have like two uh, cold shoes that I've put on the, the monitor, but I'm sorry, on the handle. But yeah, they may not want those. So these just give them those extra points and it let, allows them to like do it in kind of whatever way they want. So also it's a good mount support for like articulating arms and, and, and things of that nature. Back to the monitor though. Um, so the next thing is I, uh, I like this monitor because it um, allows me to power it through uh, what they call limo power. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. It's like limo, limo, uh, limo, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it's all the same, but gee, I can't get that connection in. Yeah, it's also just, it's a, it's a nice little connection as well. Um, it locks in and yeah, it's a little sturdier. Now, again, I'm running this cable here through my little sprig cable management piece. Um, yeah, and I, this one as well, I wrap it around the back of the handle here. This is like always something, again, like, you know, the reason I'm even pointing it out is I don't really see it uh, much, and there's, there's probably so many reasons why. So I know one day I will probably not be doing this, but right now I, I just really like the way that that works. Again, it's just working for me. And then next thing we go, we'll go to the battery. So um, I use, this is the, uh, I've got some notes here, Core SWX Nano U98. This battery is so... Friggin' sick um, for the, the FX6. You can use it. They make different versions for Panasonic's, I think, Canon cameras, but it, it also, this exact battery, this exact model, works for the FX9 as well. But it basically has this DTAP port, and it also has a USB port. So that allows me to go through the limo power for the monitor, and like limo to DTAP powered off the same batteries that I'm powering the actual camera off of. Super cool. Um, again, you know, like I said, I'm always trying to keep things kind of minimal as much as I can. Um, so it just helps me not having to have an extra battery here on the monitor. One last thing to, you know, remember to keep charged and whatnot. I have like four of these and that usually gets me through a day. Um, there, are, there have been scenarios where, uh, you know, four won't quite cut it, but four is enough where like after I burn through two, I'm usually gonna know that the days, I'm usually kind of get the sense that the day is gonna be longer so I can start throwing those on the charger and they charge like super, super quick. Um, I can usually have, I can have one charged within the time it takes to, to outrun the other one. So that's super cool. All right, so now let's talk audio. First things first, I've replaced the shock mount um, on the camera. So the one that the, X, the FX6 comes with, it, it's a little creaky. It's not the best design. Um, and just the fact that like, it's not really universal as far as like what type of, of microphone you can put in there. You always have to jam some sort of piece of uh, foam or, or something like that or gaff tape around a microphone to make it fit. So yeah, this like shock mount kind of eliminates that. This thing was, it's 3D printed, um, but it was designed by Alistair Chapman. Um, he's, a, he's a Sony um, pro ambassador. Um, really cool guy, you should go check him out. Uh, yeah, fabulous. Anyway, this, it, it basically converts it to be like a, an old school, like tried and true standard uh, rubber band like shock mount. So, um, and that lets you basically fit any sort of microphone in there as long as the, the rubber bands will allow you to, you know, um, as far as the tension goes. When I'm primarily shooting, if I'm primarily gonna be shooting indoors, um, I'm gonna use the S mic, the Deity S mic 2S. Uh, it's a phenomenal little microphone, super short, small, compact. Um, I really like it, you know, basically for those reasons. Um, it is good quality. Um, yeah, you get some good stuff out of this mic. Uh, and I pair it with this awesome little coiled XLR cable. Um, put it in this way, and then if you see, it allows me, I kind of wrap it through there, and I usually plug it into my uh, line two on the XLR ports. And um, yeah, basically this super compact. <laughs> Um, and very minimal looking, you know, it's, it's also, it just looks, it's, it's aesthetically pleasing in my opinion, uh, a lot more aesthetically pleasing. 
uh, but it keeps the this like aerial. You see me grabbing the, the thing. It keeps the the um, XLR out of my out of my way. You know, a lot of good hand room there. Typically, a normal XLR will be you know kind of end out here, and then the cord will be coming out. So, you know, you really have to kind of come in and over again. It just kind of eliminates that, which is awesome. Um, but now. Like I said, this is what I use uh, when I'm primarily gonna be shooting indoors. The reason being is if you see this uh, windscreen, it just fits on there um, in terms of like the, the way they're uncovering the gills here on the microphone. Um, and it just hits the, the, the microphone uh, mount there. So it has been very challenging to find a, a dead cat that will fit it um, properly and not leave some of those those little uh, gills exposed. Man, that was not good. That just smacked my lens. But um, yeah, with, without leaving those little gills exposed, it's very hard to find um, a good uh, dead cat or windscreen solution to fit that. And the, the windscreen it comes with, um, it's all right, but it really doesn't hold up in, in, <laughs> into like in too much wind. Um, so not great. And that actually goes for, you know, even the original mount that comes on the FX6. It doesn't work as well. It doesn't work great with that either. Um, so because of that, I uh, found this other solution that I use. This is the um, Sony ECM MS2. Um, I had to look at my notes for that one. Uh, this is an older microphone. Um, so you're not going to hear it talked about as much, uh, but uh, it's a gem in my opinion. Um, it was originally designed for the FS7, from what I know. It does have, you know, it doesn't. The the XLR does not disconnect from it, so you know it's, you know, not the coolest. But um, it actually is a it's a stereo microphone. So basically, it it separates the two different channels. So you have left left side audio and, and right side audio. Now. Uh, the you know kind of downside is you have because you have the two channels you know you have to use two has two different XLR connections that you have to plug in um, or you don't have to plug in but to get the stereo sound like what you have to use now a cool thing though is if you do not want to take up both ports and you do you know you can you want to opt for the just the the mono um, recording you can take the red. XLR, you unplug that and it turns it into a mono signal. So um, yeah, it gives you that extra XLR port, which is cool. You know, downfall is you have this thing kind of dangling, but you know, count your blessings, you know, right? You're like break your battles is what I'm really trying to say. Um, but yeah, going back to the, um, you know, why I would use this for if I'm gonna be moving indoors and outdoors, um, the gills on this, as you see, they stop a lot sooner. Um, than the, the S Mark II S did. So that allows me to fit a whole lot of different windscreens and, and dead cats, things like that. So the one though that I found that I just, it's, it's in my opinion, the one is this one from Ryoko. Um, and I'll have it linked down in the description below because I don't know the exact model number, um, but fits on there just nice. Um, but it, it's, it, it's not the, the prettiest, um, windscreen but it's amazing it it uh it's from what i understand it's it's actually uh, kind of in the middle ground between a regular like traditional um furry like like uh, fur like dead cat um and then having like a the the capsule that would go over that like the hard capsule it's that in between so um yeah i love it it's it's amazing next thing we'll talk about is is actually the wireless audio options for like lapel mics and whatnot. So I use the Sony UWP D21 um, kit, I'll call it. Um, and this configuration that I'm setting up um, is, when, is what I'm gonna run when I'm uh, gonna be running like a steady rig. I'm sorry, an easy rig, not a steady rig, an easy rig um, so that the, you know, the um, cord can pick it up here on my little, this is my little, um, the easy rig knob. You can grab the knob there and it's, you know, it's not in the way of anything. And I can still use my monitor um, and operate that, you know, 
in, in the way that you would normally operate the Easy Rig. It also, this mounting, it allows me to, to mount it here from kind of the center of the camera, so it will keep it a little more balanced. Um, it's not going to be perfect. This is still a lot of front weight, but it does offset that a little bit more. And then, you know, it doesn't make me have to change the actual rig up too much. When I'm running it here, I do have to, I will go into the audio um, through the second XLR input there. And typically, I'm running this. I will actually kind of curl it up here under that handle and then go in that way. Um, and then, yeah, obviously I'll send my uh, transmitter off to the, with the talent, you know, and I'll mic them up. Um, so that's that configuration. Now, the magic, <laughs> or what's so cool about this, uh, this particular wireless system is that it, you can actually use it with the um, electronic like hot shoe that's provided on the FX6. And it's, it's also on a lot of other Sony cameras, so the system works with, with a lot of them. And what that does is, yeah, it eliminates having to use the, the XLR connection. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I will typically run this, this next si um, setup when, say, I'm going to be in the uh, studio, you know, I'm running interviews all day, like just sit down interviews. Um, so what I'll actually do is there's um, this little fitting that you have to buy separately uh, from the kit. And it actually, it's pretty easy. You just kind of pop this little connection off, which is, it's really cool. Like you don't need any tools to actually change it. Um, pop that off and then this guy there's uh, it's got a little connection that you actually um, just pop this little thing open and insert in the connection and there's a little screw back here that screws in I know you can't see half of this stuff it's quite far away um, but then it gives me this hot shoe connection so um, I will move, since I have my, my monitor mounted on the hot shoe, um, I will actually move it back. So take this out because now I'm going to um, move the monitor back here to this. This is why I have this um, little cold shoe back here. Um, I actually kind of usually let that dangle and again, we go back through, Blah, get a little hung up there, but all right, plug that XLR back in. Now this actually allows me, so if I have um, a boom mic now, because we're shooting interviews, um, I can run it without both um, XLR inputs um, on this microphone. So then now I have, uh, you know, some good scratch audio. And then I run the boom mic through the second one. And then for the Olav, you know, I have this that put right here on the hot shoe, which now is powered. It can be powered through the hot shoe. So um, the camera battery now is now powering this unit the monitor and the camera. Um, and so, yeah, and it's also just eliminates the cords, you know, it's cordless now. And uh, yeah, that's basically it, you know. Um, obviously throw the transmitter on the talent and whatnot. And yeah, it works flawlessly too. Like this system is so on point. Um, very pricey, but not, when you compare it to other things like in that in that same range or whatnot, um, it, it's such a good solution. Um, definitely an investment piece. You'll have it for for a, a very long time. Like I, I don't see any need for me to be able to to, to have to upgrade that in, in uh, quite some time. So now let's move on to the lens. Um, the lens I, I typically rock is the uh, Sony G Master 24 to 
70, it's the F2. Um, it kind of lives on this camera. If I you know, show up somewhere and gotta get, get moving quick, um, for some reason I don't have too much time to, to actually set up, I can just pick it right up out of the case, grab it and go, and this is gonna give me such a phenomenal range of you know, what I would need to just get something on the fly like that. When it's in the bag, I keep a Pro Mist, a black Pro Mist, uh, one eighth filter on it, it's by Tiffin. Um, and essentially what, what that does, it just kind of softens up your image a little bit. If you have uh, skin or whatnot, it smooths it out a lot. And it, it you know, blooms highlights out and softens up shadows a little bit. Um, basically, it just kind of knocks the digital sharpness off the image and makes it a little bit more filmic-like. Um, again, like I said, I actually keep it on um, in the bag just because it's a lot easier for me to remember to take it off than it is to remember to put it on. And, and typically a lot of the stuff that I shoot, you know, I prefer it because it's, it's, this strength is very light. It's just enough um, you know, to kind of to give the, the image that, that, that little bit of magic, you know? uh, but not so much that it looks super, super stylistic you know? and, and, and over the top. Now, yeah, obviously if there's, there are scenarios where I don't need that or it wouldn't, I want that clinical sharpness and whatnot, um, or say the production actually calls for it and it has nothing to do with, you know, my stylistic choices or whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why I keep the, the Pro Mist on there. Um, and that's, that's it. Um, this is my FX6 setup. I'll have everything I mentioned throughout the video linked in the description. And uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.